Hey everybody, welcome to part four of our Enterprise E build. And today we are going to be lighting the nacelles. And yep, we're, we're kind of starting off at the end here to show you guys what these nacelles actually look like. And yes, you can see here we have a very nice, even blue glow all the way across the back of that nacelle. And we have kind of a nice fiery red inside of the Bussard collector at the opening of that. So let's look at how we get from LED tape, LEDs, and some things like uh, polyfill and packing material to get lit nacelles. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually just build the nacelle before we put the lights in it. Now, I've always found that this part is fairly hard to light block if you don't get these seams taken care of properly. Uh, you can kind of see that these parts don't fit that well. If I can stay in focus here. Um, you can kind of see there's a big gap to the side. There's a gap in the back and even a gap around the front part of that round piece. Here you can kind of see same thing. You're going to have a little bit of a gap on the other side and light will definitely shine through that. So I try and deal with that um, as I'm building it. And I'm going to start off just using some acrylic putty. And I'm going to putty that seam before I start fitting these pieces together. All right, so now we've got some putty laid in on both sides of the part. And now we're going to start just building that. As we get those two parts put together, you can start seeing that it's going to squeeze some of that putty out those seams. Now we're going to clamp it, hold it in place. And then we're going to use just a wet Q-tip to clean up the putty that came through those cracks. All right. So there you can see we've managed to fill those cracks quickly and easily, uh, very easy to clean up. It will paint very well. No need to sand this over and over to get looking good. That putty is just going to seam in those cracks, just going to dry in those cracks perfectly. Now that I've got it clamped, we're going to use our Tamiya liquid cement. We're going to run liquid cement over the seams. The clamp will gently press it. Overall, we'll have to just do a little bit of sanding to make sure that bottom part is nice and smooth. Now we're going to let that sit and let it dry. So the electronics on this are going to be really, really simple. Uh, for most of the ship, I'm going to be using LED strips. Uh, this is double density. This is 12 volt um, LEDs on a strip. So pretty much what it says on the uh, label. Uh, the next, I'm using 12 volt LEDs. That means everything can be powered off the same power source. So 12 volt LED that we've tinted red, just with red acrylic paint. Now these LED strips have little contacts on them. Um, all these little copper pads are contacts that just carry the voltage forward. And that lets you attach strips to other strips 
or cut them along those connections. But it also will let us actually put our LED on that strip and be powered off of it. So that's what we're going to start with. And we're going to start just soldering that on. And of course, whenever you solder, you want to heat the connection, not the solder. Get the connection nice and hot, and then just put a drip of solder right on that little contact pad. All right, we've got our solder on. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tin the leads from the LED. That's just going to be adding a little bit of solder to kind of prevent corrosion to the end of that wire. After you've done that, you can just put down on the solder you've already put on, get it melted a little bit, and have it soldered in place. All right, that is now connected to the strip. After that, we're gonna do exactly the same thing to add our power leads. Uh, they'll go down into the ship. Heat the connection, put just a little bit of solder on it. Then you can take your tinned wire. These ones were already tinned. Next, we're going to mark where our wires need to come out of the nacelle to get that not into that notch and trench that we've made in our pylon. So we're going to kind of drive fit those together. We're going to look for that notch, and we're just going to mark it on the inside of that nacelle. Okay, we're going to kind of size things up. And we're going to remove the adhesive on our LED strip. Now it's time to feed those wires down and out of the nacelle. Paying attention to try and keep them right by that mark that we just made. Then we're going to press that LED strip down just right in the middle of our nacelle. All right, looks like that fits. We now have our LEDs in place. Now just bare LEDs like that under just clear plastic uh, will be far too bright and you'll have lots of hot spots. Um, so what we need to do is we need to use a diffusing material. Now to diffuse this first part and give it some dimension inside it, because if you look at the movie, it's got a lot of swirling and wispy kind of plasma inside. So I've taken just some polyfill, um, I've colored it yellow with yellow acrylic, and we're just going to kind of push that in to that hollow spot in behind those clear parts. Okay. 
I'm not sure how well you guys can see that, but you'll see that there is now uh, kind of some of that wispy kind of look behind it. So it's not just going to be a clear globe. Now to, to diffuse this part in back, uh, it's a little bit of experimentation. Um, these LEDs turned out to be pretty darn bright. So I'm just starting with an actual piece of white paper that I'm just going to layer right on top of those LEDs. Um, after that, I just kind of played with it, kind of with a couple different materials. So this is a packing material that I had held on to, and I actually sprayed a little clear to my blue on that, um, just kind of playing with how bright the LEDs were getting and how blue I want to keep things. And these layers are just going to prevent you from having too many hot spots and make sure everything kind of ends up the right color. And then the last thing I used was a uh, piece of blue tissue paper. So I'm probably not going to glue these um, final plastic parts on yet. Uh, I may continue to kind of play with those diffusing layers uh, to make sure once the entire model is built and complete that I still like how bright those are. If they're not bright enough, I'll take out a few layers. If they're too bright, I'll probably put a, another layer in or use some more paint to, to tone that down. Um, but really just trial and error, whatever you can do to make those a nice even glow and not be overpowering. So that's actually pretty darn simple after you see it all the way through, isn't it? I mean, afterwards, you can see I threw a little bit of paint on the model just to make it look a little bit more like an cell, but really not much to that electronics as it is. Uh, and this is actually a very inexpensive way to go as well. A uh, roll of LED tape like this, usually 30 bucks at the most, and it's definitely enough to do several different models. Uh, you can easily buy packs of uh, 50, 60 of these LEDs for probably about $10. After that, um, a spool of $10 wire will get you through three or four builds. All in all, uh, I'll stock up on the electronics and spend probably $60, $70 and get enough LEDs that I can probably do three or four models. And I, I like the effect. I don't go for much of the uh, blinking or the nav lights. Um, most of my displays are just statically lit. Uh, and it's, as you've seen in this video, very easy, very inexpensive, and it can look pretty good. So thank you guys for watching very, very much. Our next video will be a short one. We're just going to put some of the LEDs in the main engineering hall, get all the wires connected, and after that, I'll be working on the saucer. So thank you guys for following the build. Thank you for following the channel. We'll see you guys soon.